Hello to all music lovers out there. This is uh, Neven, Atlas Vigilante. And uh, I uh, wanted to make a video uh, on the account of the news, the, of course, very tragic news that we received uh, yesterday that uh, the legendary hard rock and heavy metal producer uh, Martin Birch uh, passed away. And, uh, well, I wanted to make a video regarding this. I, I mean, I had, uh, I have uh, like, uh, let's say three main points that I want to touch on because when I received this very sad news, it got a lot of uh, thoughts uh, within me going and uh, I started thinking a lot, of course, about uh, all, of the, all of the great work that uh, uh, Martin Birch has been involved in, but also what, uh, uh, well, uh, not least uh, what he meant for my own uh, musical taste and for my own uh, development as a, a musical mu lover of music. But uh, there were a couple of other points also that came to mind. But uh, first to start with, uh, of course, uh, I mean, uh, he, as a producer, Martin Birch is probably for me personally the most uh, important name uh, <coughs> there was uh, because uh, and that is simply the fact that he has been the, very involved in two of my all-time favorite bands uh, uh, Deep Purple and uh, Iron Maiden and uh, well Iron Maiden was pretty much uh, well, I would say the band that I, the first, the, at least when it comes to, definitely when it comes to heavy metal, the, the first band that really grew big for me personally, that I really got into and started uh, buying, collecting all of their, their records. And uh, by then, this was uh, like 20 years ago, when I listened to music, uh, uh, back then in the early 2000s I wasn't really thinking about like production and the, the producer of course I saw saw the name on the records from uh, well not just Maiden but a lot of bands I listened to back then but I never really thought about and of course I know that the music was recorded in a studio obviously but uh, I didn't really think about what, what the producer had to do with it, how important he or she uh, was for the music. But of course, as I bought uh, more and more uh, uh, records uh, with uh, Iron Maiden, I, um, I noticed that uh, there was uh, this name that they always stood uh, produced by uh, Martin Birch and Martin and, and that, then they're usually, as you know, uh, they usually had uh, like some sort of a nickname for him for every record and I believe that that went through with uh, that was the case with a lot of other bands that they had a nickname for specific nickname for each record and uh, of course uh, one of these records uh, one of my early favorite Maiden records uh, Summer in Time the 1986 classic uh, like uh, when I heard a lot of this uh, Maiden stuff, uh, uh, I, uh, well, when I, now when I look back at, when I, the, the, there was definitely, I could perhaps already feel back then when I listened to the first Iron Maiden album on which uh, Martin wasn't involved, it was, uh, uh, I don't remember what his name was right now, but I know that the band was very unhappy with the, the production sound on the Iron Maiden debut. But I remember when I uh, already done when I heard the very raw sounding uh, Iron Maiden debut, and when I compared it to uh, all of the other uh, works, uh, at least. Uh, over the course of the 80s that, that I noticed that uh, uh, I mean even if I 
perhaps didn't thought about it back then, I, at least subconsciously, I noticed that this did a whole, that the production, the sound that they had, that it, uh, it, it, it was clearly something that added an important uh, presence, an important layer to the material and particularly, of course, to uh, the fantastic songwriting of uh, Steve Harris. And that's not something that holds true um, not least for somewhere in time uh, where a, a lot of you know that uh, they b began to use uh, more of a uh, uh, guitar synth uh, driven sound uh, but uh, they did it in such a way that it really fit the uh, uh, it, it really fit the I mean, the theme of the album, it's like uh, futuristic, or I guess today that you could call the sound of it retro-futuristic with the 80s making somewhat of a comeback in later years. Uh, but I, and uh, the more and more I listened to Maiden, the more and more I became aware what uh, what a great producer actually meant for uh, for a band and what it meant, that, that it wasn't just enough to just write a bunch of great songs and go in a studio and to press record, but, but that you actually had to, that you actually had, uh, had, had to have something more and something to tie everything together to make a whole picture of it, of an album. Uh, and uh, then uh, uh, a couple of years later, I got into, uh, uh, as it was, I got into several other bands, which became my favorites, uh, not least, and this was in uh, 2002, uh, not least uh, where I got into Deep Purple and uh, Rainbow, and uh, this is, of course, the classic Made in Japan Live, uh, where uh, Martin Birch, he's not credited as the producer, but he was the engineer that uh, recorded the shows in I believe that he recorded all of the shows in Japan. Uh, and uh, I mean, this quickly became one of my uh, top records of all time. Not, not just uh, the, uh, not just when it comes to live records, but music overall. And of course, Rainbow Rising. Um, once again, he, it, it was a sound and I had to look back at it once again. I. I uh, realized that I uh, it grew on me already back then that uh, this was a sound that uh, it really brought uh, everything best out of the material and all of the fantastic musicianship that was contained on uh, this record uh, and then when I started discovering more and more music I, I saw that this guy's name uh, Martin Birch that he uh, was present on uh, a, a lot of other uh, records, um, not least from a lot of other bands, not least Michael Schenker Group, Blue Oyster Cult, uh, as well as a couple of other bands that became really huge for me about the same time uh, as uh, Rainbow and uh, Deep Purple, and that those two were not very surprisingly uh, White Snake, uh, Written Will in front in, from 1980 and from the same year. The all time fantastic uh, Heaven and Hell, uh, both produced by uh, Birch, of course, and uh, 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 this record, Heaven and Hell. Uh, I can't, uh, uh, this was uh, another one of those that I, I pretty much listened to it uh, when I was traveling pretty much every morning when I began high school uh, in the fall of 2002 uh, every day when I went to the bus uh, at, at least the first two or three months I listened to this record on the bus and also uh, a lot during the recesses so it became pretty much ingrained in my DNA during that time which I'm uh, quite happy for uh, still today but uh, so, so yeah uh, during those couple of years when I discovered all of these bands, uh, I, uh, it was pretty much with Martin Birch that I, uh, as I, once again, as I said, that I discovered what a great producer uh, really means for, uh, for a band. So, uh, 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, when it comes to once again, when it comes to the names that, uh, well, names in music production, he is still number one for me. And of course, he he went uh, he went into retirement after 1992 and uh, different. Fear of the Dark album by Iron Maiden, and, and uh, so, and and so of course he wasn't. As far as I know, he didn't do any work since then, and he barely even gave interviews, if, if any at all. So already when I discovered his name of these bands, he had so to say already then gone from. Well, I shouldn't perhaps say. Uh, uh, gone into obscurity because of course he was a well-known name but um, he went he went into legend he, he became like this legendary name like he, he was involved in all of these uh, great fantastic bands but he didn't do anything anymore and uh, well you pretty much didn't know anything what he was doing today so um, yeah th that kind of added to this whole uh, legend and it actually made me so interesting uh, of uh, this man of uh, made me so interesting when it comes to Martin Birch that I actually in uh, uh, one of uh, one of the years during my uh, high school period I actually uh, during uh, I believe it was during the yeah it must have been during the English class I uh, made like a uh, work a, a written how would I put it like, like a mini essay about uh, Martin and uh, I remember this was perhaps in 2003 or uh, perhaps 2004 uh, I actually remember uh, so this was perhaps a bit, I don't know if, uh, I believe that Wikipedia already existed back then, but I, I remember that um, I had a hard time find, finding out a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff about him. And this was also a bit before uh, YouTube second, like uh, find any video interviews and such. Uh, perhaps I didn't look uh, really that deeply, but, but I remember that it it kind of well my work mainly consisted of like uh, going through his career of these bands that he did and uh, describing perhaps a bit on my own opinion what he added to uh, to each band and uh, well what he meant for their sound but uh, well i remember that the work got a pretty well it, it got a pretty nice grade on it so yeah that was uh, something I was happy about and uh, I also remember that uh, it, 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 I could barely find any picture of him so I believe that I used the picture that he's sitting uh, he's sitting at the control or, or, or one of the uh, uh, mixer boards or, or whatever he, anyway he's sitting in the studio and uh, it's a picture I believe that it's taken from uh, the booklet for uh, the Live After Death album by Iron Maiden, of course. Um, and I scanned it from there and put it on the front. It was a bit, pretty small picture, uh, which I enlarged and put on front of my uh, written mini essay. Uh, so that was also something that added to the mystique of this man, that uh, he did all these great works, but uh, there I was like uh, 12 years after he went into retirement and I could barely find uh, I could barely find anything. Any uh, well, what I could find was just this bare bones uh, uh, information about what he had done, but but not so much about what kind of person he was, or uh, more uh, like uh, very specifically how he how he worked, or even what he thought about um, the music that he helped to create. Uh, but um, I mean, overall, if I would, uh, if I would uh, like summarize uh, his work, I mean, uh, if I would like just shortly describe the, his style of uh, production, I would say, uh, and, and this is something that really holds true, even if you're listening to, as I said, uh, uh, Summer in Time or Heaven and Hell or 
uh, Rainbow Rising, uh, his uh, style of production, and I, uh, this is another thing that was, I believe, uh, was really important for me when I grew more into loving and listening to heavy metal. Um, his style of production uh, could be, have been described uh, as uh, it was well produced, but not overly over the top, uh, overproduced, and it wasn't polished, but still like, uh, how would I put it, like a, a very perhaps beautiful epic sound. It, it, uh, it had like this perfect mixture, uh, perfect balance between uh, the like really raw side on uh, of heavy metal and the uh, more polished, poppier commercial type of uh, heavy metal and hard rock sound. And I guess uh, I would say this is a very important factor to why, uh, well, why Iron Maiden was able to make it big during the 80s and why there's still such a legendary name today. And uh, it, it's no, um, I saw that somebody called him, uh, and I believe that I've heard about this earlier, that somebody called uh, uh, Martin Birch like the George Martin of the hard rock and heavy metal. And I, uh, for one could definitely agree with that statement uh, so yes sad news indeed of course uh, but uh, well uh, the thing was i mean of course it was unexpected uh, but uh, we also at least i i mean he wasn't active wasn't doing any stuff so it, it's it's not like uh, you had uh, like a lot of active musicians and then you heard that that they passed away i mean like somebody that does an album last year and then passed away this year uh, it, it became like more shocking and, and uh, this was also of course a very shocking loss but um, uh, as i said already back 20 years ago i felt like he had like became this whole mythical figure and uh, well now perhaps what I'm trying to say with this a bit of a rambling is that he's uh, become an even more of a mythical figure now and and that, that brings me to uh, the second point that I wanted to uh, bring up uh, it has to do specifically with Heaven and Hell one of my all-time favorite Black Sabbath records uh, so as a lot of you may know, uh, well, well, when it comes to the guys that did this record, of course, uh, the main band, uh, uh, Ronnie James D on vocals, Gizu Butler on bass, Bill Ward on drums, and uh, of course, uh, Tony Yomi on guitar, uh, as well as Jeff Nichols on keyboards, who joined uh, for the recording of this album. But uh, those four first mentioned guys were, of course, the main band. Uh, so, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, but of course, uh, Gizzy Butler, Bill Ward, Tony Iommi, they are uh, still with us. But uh, uh, sadly, Ronnie James Dio, as uh, we all know, passed away. Now it's 10 years ago, so it, uh, well, crazy to think about that. It's been so long already. But yeah, Ronnie James Dio is not with us anymore. Uh, Jeff Nichols, who was the main, uh, who was the man behind Tuna Yomi from this album and up until like 20 years later, uh, he passed away like, well, three or four years ago. Well, some pretty shortly from now, uh, pretty shortly before now. So, and now of course, Martin Birch have passed away. So uh, it, uh, made me think a bit uh, like uh, and, and now as, as I said Martin Birch he didn't do any interviews as far as I saw not at least not in later years so he, he hasn't really talked about this album but uh, uh, but of course uh, Ronnie gladly talked about it and I know that Jeff Nichols did, Jeff Nichols did the, a lot of interviews where he obviously talk about his time with Sabbath, but now uh, 
So, Ronnie, uh, Jeff, and Martin, uh, like th there are uh, three main components that are that are uh, lost in time, uh, forever lost to the world, and uh, well, that can't uh, that can't really add anything to the story, which just uh, uh, well, of course, it it it's a really sad thought, and uh, then we have uh, of course the other three guys. Uh, well, that's uh, that's the question about how much more they will. I guess uh, Tony Ayomi likes to talk about this album, but the, the fact is, and uh, this is also something that is a bit, uh, well, yeah, I would say a bit upsetting for me. That uh, so as uh, uh, I guess that a lot of you have seen that uh, uh, Black Sabbath they are releasing a deluxe super mega deluxe edition whatever of Paranoid for its 15th anniversary edition and of course they were going to do something with the album uh, with Paranoid even though they released it in like 3 billion deluxe editions before but all right but uh, like uh, why why can't we have a deluxe edition of uh, Heaven and Hell uh, I know there was a del deluxe edition uh, released like uh, 12 years ago or something but, but i mean this would also be a this could also have been like a fantastic box set because i i would dare to bet that there are a ton of uh, interesting material like demos and uh, work in progress song sketches outtakes uh, uh, different uh, alternative takes so whatever present in the walls that uh, could have made this like a really fantastic box set but uh, uh, for some reason um, and uh, we could perhaps discuss this in uh, further videos to not drag this uh, on and longer but for some reason uh, the the powers that be let's just say it like that the powers that be that reside that have control over the Black Sabbath catalog uh, uh, for some reason just seem to focus on the uh, well the first 10 years that the band did with the original lineup and uh, uh, of course I understand it from a commercial uh, commercial view but uh, I mean this is if, if, if this isn't a heavy metal classic then really what is and for anybody that's perhaps a young listener that uh, is discovering heavy metal uh, right now and has just recently gotten into Black Sabbath but you've only heard the stuff for, from the original lineup so far do, you, do yourself a favor do check out Heaven and Hell and also its follow-up Mob Rules also produced by Martin Birch and for that matter well, check out all of the material that Black Sabbath did from 1980 and onwards. Uh, you won't, you won't be sorry. I'll, I can guarantee you that. Uh, and uh, I had one more point, uh, something that I also thought about that it's uh, perhaps um, also a bit of a. Well, it's also a bit of a melancholic thought that makes you think and this was some uh, I saw uh, somebody post this on Facebook uh, and I, I've seen other uh, like um, other thoughts about uh, this uh, and and that is that uh, the fact that it, it is in a lot of cases and not just when it comes to famous mus musicians but when people pass away in general uh, that we uh, uh, after their death uh, then uh, we who are uh, left uh, living uh, then then we like flood the social media and, and whatever with the tributes and oh that person did so and so such and uh, it, it is now uh, like with Martin Birch of course people are sharing the favorite albums that he produced and worked on engineers and so on and th th there's absolutely nothing bad in that it's only logical but uh, as uh, people have pointed out it would be perhaps be uh, uh, well like we could perhaps try to make a tribute to people and uh, like uh, make a tribute and tell people what they mean to us while they are uh, they are still uh walking uh, among us um, 
and of course uh, i mean uh, martin birch during, during his lifetime and now in later years of course he was a legend in the heavy metal and harder community so it's not like people weren't talking about him and weren't aware of what he did but but there's just something that uh, I believe that, uh, yeah, I mean, just for example, there are a lot of musicians that uh, say, well, I don't need to perhaps name any names, but you know, like say when a uh, guitarist, certain guitarists pass away and then comes like the old oh, Spotify list with all the greatest, my favorite songs that he did, or here we have a uh, list, uh, here are, are uh, my favorite uh, 10 uh, solos that he did and so uh, I mean you could uh, uh, why not do these lists uh, while the person is still alive and I know that a lot of people do make these lists while this while uh, the people are still alive but uh, I guess what I'm trying to say uh, the tributes and like the good words uh, it, it uh, should uh, we should try to make them count and make them reach the uh, the peoples i mean the, the people that were making the tribute about we, we should try to make these uh, tributes and nice words uh, reach the people while uh, they're still alive and uh, yeah i guess that that was pretty much what i had to say for this video so uh, well yeah Martin Birch, of course, uh, thank you for all of the great music that you, you were involved with and uh, uh, yeah, you uh, definitely left quite a legacy indeed. So yeah, everybody, uh, take care and uh, I'll see you soon again. Bye for now.